All right, put on the microphone. Will all the council, will all the council members come to the chambers? Will all the council members have your seats so that we can begin the meeting? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Griffin. Here. Bishop. Conwell. Gray. Hairston. Harsh. House Jones. Jones. Casey. Kelly. Moorer. McCormack. Palencic. Santana. Slife. Spencer. Starr. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, please mark Councilwoman Gray as an excused absence, please. Will everyone please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll open up this meeting once again by making the following statement. This meeting of Cleveland City Council is a lawful meeting under section 605.04 of the codified ordinances. No person with the purpose to prevent or disrupt a lawful meeting shall do any act which obstructs or interferes with the due conduct of such meeting. Members of the public are invited to speak only under the rules set by this council. Disruptions including, but not limited to, speaking out of turn and making loud noises and utterances are in violation of the, of the rules and interfere with the due conduct of this lawful meeting. Such disruptions may constitute a misdemeanor and a violation of 605.04. Anyone who disrupts this lawful meeting in violation of the codified ordinances commits misdemeanors and is subject to prosecution. The following is the first and only warning. If this meeting is disrupted, I will gavel a halt to the proceedings and direct the assembled officers to escort any person participating in the disruption of the chamber. Once persons participating in the disruption are outside of the chambers, the officers will close the doors and the disruptors will be handled as directed by the Director of Public Safety. The council proceedings will not begin again until those that participated in the disruption have left the chamber and the chamber doors are closed. Disruptors will not be allowed back in the chamber after the meeting resumes. Again, this is the first and only warning. Madam Clerk, please dispense with the journal. By council member Starr, that the reading of the minutes of the last meeting be dispensed with the journal approved, seconded by council member Spencer. Thank you. I want to make a quick statement that tonight we will cover all items of business, but without objection by the council, we will change the order of business for this meeting. We will start with the third, second, and first reading of legislation, then follow this order of business. Communications, condolence, and congratulatory resolutions, presentations, and public comment. Then council introductions, announcements, and miscellaneous. Madam Clerk, please proceed with the third reading, emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 160 2024 by Councilmember Griffin by departmental request to make appropriations and provide current expenses for the daily operation of all municipal departments of the City of Cleveland for the fiscal year from January 1, 2024 until December 31, 2024. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. Thank you. Second reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Oh, Councilman Starr. Can you mark me as a no for ordinance 160-2024? Second reading emergency ordinances to be passed. So noted. So the count is 11 yeas, one nay. Read the motion to suspend the rules. Oh, second reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 157 2024 
by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to enter into an agreement with Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District to accept funding and support of the Department of Public Safety's Environmental Crimes Task Force for the purposes including but not limited to the purchase of training and equipment necessary to assist in combating illegal dumping. Ordinance 158-2024 by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Homeland Security for fiscal year 2022, I'm sorry, for fiscal year 22 fire prevention and safety grant program, and authorizing the purchase by one or more contracts of smoke CO detectors, including installation and installation tools. Ordinance 159, 2024, by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for fiscal year 23 State Burn Memorial Justice Assistance Grant to provide funding for the operation of the Cartel Gang Narcotics and Laundering Task Force and authorizing agreements with various entities to implement the grant. Ordinance 165-2024 by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Homeland Security for fiscal year 22 assistance to firefighters grant, and authorizing the Director to employ one or more professional consultants to conduct cancer and behavioral health screenings and medical and fitness evaluations and expanding health and cancer screenings. Ordinance 228-2024 by Council Members Conwell and Griffin by departmental request to amend section 241.05 of the codified ordinances relating to food shop licenses and fees. Ordinance 263-2024 as amended by Council Member Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Human Resources to employ one or more professional services to administer the city's employee assistance program and to provide learning and development training to various city departments on an as-needed basis and for a one-year period with three one-year options to renew exercisable by the Director of Human Resources. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Council Member Starr, that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Council Member Spencer. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Polensic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 13 yeas. Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Polensic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 13 yeas. First reading emergency ordinances referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance 304, 2024, by Council Members Bishop, Hairston, and Griffin by departmental request to amend Section 3105.16 of the codified ordinances relating to payment of permit fees. Ordinance 305, 2024, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to apply for and accept a grant from the Cleveland Guardians Charities for the Baseball and Softball Summer Youth Program. Ordinance 306, 2024, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to exercise the first option to renew a contract with Rumpke of Ohio for the transfer, disposal, and processing of recyclable materials. Ordinance 307-2024, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the purchase by one or more standard and requirement contracts for the purchase, lease, or lease with option to purchase of various on-road vehicles, apparatus, and off-road equipment, cabs, bodies, and accessories, equipment, and other aftermarket items necessary to equip the vehicles authorized for their intended purposes, including vehicle rehabilitation, training, and inspections as needed for the various divisions of city government. Ordinance 308-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into one or more contracts with Case Western Reserve University to provide a youth summer sports nutrition, health, and life skills development program for 2024 under the National Youth Sports Program supported by Case Western Reserve University. 
Ordinance 309-2024 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into a contract with Northeast Ohio Muni Football League, aka Cleveland Municipal Football Association, to conduct a large, wide, I'm sorry, a citywide youth football program. Ordinance 310-2024 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin, authorizing the Director of Port Control to enter into a lease agreement with RES Aviation, DBA Zone Aviation for the lease of certain city-owned space at Burke Lake Front Airport for a period of one year with four one-year options to renew, exercisable by the Director of Port Control. Ordinance 311, 2024, by Council Members Bishop, McCormack, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Directors of Public Works and or Port Control as appropriate to enter into a license agreement with USS Cleveland Legacy Foundation or its designee to install and maintain the Lone Sailor, the Lone Sailor Monument at the northwest corner of city-owned property in Voinovich Park and to make improvements to the area surrounding the monument for an, uh, an initial term of one year and automatically renewing year to year for a period up to 25 years unless terminated by either party. Ordinance 312-2024 by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of repairing and upgrading the second high to first high regulator at Nottingham Water Treatment Plant and authorizing the Director of Public Works to enter into one or more public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement. Ordinance 313, 2024, by Council Members Santana, Bishop, and Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Finance on behalf of the Office of Prevention, Intervention, and Opportunity for Youth and Young Adults to employ one or more professional consultants to design and implement projects to support the transformation of city recreation centers into trauma-informed neighborhood resource and recreation centers to develop and provide programs and, act and activities for youth and their families to serve as tools to prevent violence, develop skills and knowledge to overcome challenges associated with the trauma and toxic stress, and to create opportunities for youth and their families to live quality lives for a period not to exceed a, a total term of 18 months with one or more options to renew for an additional total term not to exceed 18 months, exercisable by the Director of Finance. Ordinance 315-2024 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the issuance and sale of revenue refunding bonds to refund outstanding revenue bonds of the core city program for economic and community development in the city, authorizing a tender and or exchange program with respect to refunding of outstanding revenue bonds of the core city program and providing for the appointment of professionals and authorizing documents with respect thereto and authorizing related matters. Ordinance 316-2024 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the issuance and sale of one or more series of general obligation refunding bonds to refund currently outstanding general obligation bonds of the city to obtain debt service savings or restructure the city's outstanding debt, authorizing a tender or exchange program with respect to the general obligation refunding bonds and providing for the appointment of professionals and authorizing documents with respect thereto and authorizing and approving related matters. Ordinance 317, 2024, by Council Member Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing the issuance and sale of one or more series of subordinate lien income tax refunding bonds to refund currently outstanding general obligation and subordinate lien income tax bonds of the city to obtain debt service savings or restructure the city's outstanding debt, 
authorizing a tender and or exchange program with respect to the subordinate lien income tax refunding bonds and providing for the appointment of professionals and authorizing documents with respect thereto and authorizing and approving related matters. Ordinance 318-2024 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request authorizing the issuance and sale of water revenue obligations to refund outstanding water revenue obligations, authorizing agreements related to the obligations, authorizing a tender and or exchange program with respect to the refunding of water revenue obligations, and providing for the appointment of professional and authorizing documents with respect thereto, and authorizing and approving related matters. Ordinance 319, 2024, by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the establishment of an issuance by the city of, Air, the city of airport system subordinate, subordinated indebtedness in the form of revolving lines of credit and or commercial paper program in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $175 million at any one time to pay costs improving the airport system, authorizing one or more revolving credit agreements, reimbursement agreements, official statements, dealer agreements, supplemental indentures, notes evidencing subordinated indebtedness, and other agreements related to the subordinated indebtedness and authorizing and approving related matters. First reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 320-2023 by Council Member Spencer, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Northwest Neighborhoods Community Development Corporation for the Cadell and Detroit Shoreway Neighborhood Three Maintenance Project. I'm sorry, Tree Maintenance Project through the use of Ward 15 Casino Revenue Funds. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Council Member Starr that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Council Member Spencer. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 14 yeas. Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 14 yeas. First reading emergency resolutions referred for administrative review, committee review. Resolution 321 2024 by Council Members Conwell, Hairston, and Griffin by departmental request. Approving the creation of a new special improvement district in the city by University Circle Incorporated as an existing qualified nonprofit corporation. Approving the amendment to the Articles of Incorporation by University Circle Incorporated, creating the special improvement district. Accepting petitions from owners of property in the proposed district approving the initial comprehensive services plan for the new district, declaring it necessary to provide police and safety services, pro providing for an assessment for the cost of such services upon benefited property in the district, and declaring an emergency. Resolution 322-2024 by Councilmember Conwell, recognizing that colorectal colorectal cancer is the second most common cause of cancer death in the United States and encouraging people to begin colon cancer screening at age 45 as recommended by the American Cancer Society. First reading emergency resolutions to be adopted. Resolution 314, 2024, by Council Member McCormack, withdrawing objection to the transfer of ownership of a D5, D6 liquor permit to 620 Frankfurt Avenue and repealing Resolution 37, 2020, objecting to said permit. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Council Member Starr, that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage, seconded by Council Member Spencer. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 14 yeas. Call the roll on adoption. 
Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House Jones, Jones, Casey, Kelly, Moore, McCormack, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 14 yeas. Thank you. Communications? File number 274, 2024, Oath of Office for Dornat A. Drummond, Interim Director, Department of Public Safety. File number 275, 2024, Oath of Office for Dorothy A. Todd, Chief of Police, Division of Police, Department of Public Safety. File number 276, 2024, from Council President Blaine A. Griffin, designating without objection a count of, by Council, Alan Dreyer to serve as Clerk of Council pro tem for all matters requiring the Clerk's signature between March 7, 2024 and March 15, 2024. File number 277-2024, Oath of Office for Diana M. Saganovich, Member, Civilian Police Review Board. File number 278-2024, Oath of Office for David Gation, Member, Review Board, City of Cleveland. File number 279-2024, pursuant to section 301.05 of the Codified Ordinances, Transportation Demand Management Program Standards, as approved by Cleveland City Planning Commission on March 15, 2024. File number 280-2024, from Julie Collier, Vice President of Development for Flaherty and Collins Properties. Notice of intent to apply to Ohio Housing Finance Agency for multifamily multi funding programs for the development known as West Park Apartments at 14510 Lorraine Avenue, Ward 17. File number 281-2024 from Volcraft Nucor Sales Corporation. Notice of furnishing regarding work on stadium ramp at 100 Alfred Lerner Way. File number 282 from John O. Analifo, Executive Director for Mikos Foundation. Notice of intent to apply to Ohio Housing Finance Agency for multifamily funding programs for the development known as Park Village at about 9221 Huff Avenue, Ward 7. File number 283-2024 from Scott Skinner, Vice President of Development, the NRP Group. Notice of intent to apply to Ohio Housing Finance Agency for multifamily funding programs for the development known as Churchill Gateway 2 at 10700 Churchill Avenue, Ward 9. File number 286-2024 from the Division of Treasury, Department of Finance, City of Cleveland. Sit City of Cleveland cash, cash Management and Investment Policy, March 27, 2020, 2015. Received pursuant to Section 178.14 of the Codified Ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio. File number 323, 2024, from Cuyahoga County Fiscal Office, notice of filing by the property owner of an application for placement of farmland in an agricultural district district pursuant to Ohio Revised Code section 929.02 regarding property on Nottingham Road in Cleveland, Ohio, Ward 10. File num from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, file number 284-2024 regarding a new license application at 13709 Barlett Avenue, Ward 4. File number 285-2024 regarding a stock application at 9807 Lorraine Avenue, Ward 11. File number 287, 2024, regarding a transfer of license application at 3228 West 65th Street, Ward 14. Are there any condolence resolutions? Uh, Madam Clerk, please add Kevin Bell, Sr. Are there any other condolence resolutions? Yeah, okay. I have a okay. list. Right, go ahead. <laughs> Resolutions of condolence by Councilmember Griffin for Benita Joletta Jeffrey, by Councilmember Griffin for Reverend Freddie James Graves Sr., by Councilmember Griffin for Mother Beatrice Bannerman, by Councilmember House Jones for Jessica Barbara Horn, by Councilmember Jones for Bernice Tufts, by Councilmember Jones for Eli Fayez Aboud, 
by Councilmember Palencic for Cecilia Flanoy, by Councilmember Santana for Ramona Falcon. Thank you, Councilman Bishop. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, can you hold out a number for Larry Salisbury? Thank you. So noted. And please hold out a number for Kevin Bell Sr. Are there any other condolence resolutions? Seeing no other condolence resolutions, will we all rise for a moment of silence? Thank you. Are there any congratulatory resolutions? Resolutions of congratulations by Councilmember Conwell for Thelma May Seward, by Councilmember Gray for Louis Moore, by Councilmember Griffin for Worship Prince Hall Grand Lodge on their 175th anniversary, by Councilmember McCormack for Terry Joyce, by Councilmember Palencic for, so for Sophie Maddock. Resolutions of recognition by Councilmember Santana, <clears throat> excuse me, for Nathan Kelly, by Councilmember Starr for Bridget Smith Jackson, by Council Members Griffin and Santana for Alfred Butch Lee Jr. <coughs> Thank you. We don't have any presentations today. We will now go to public comment. And I want to ask all council members to please listen to the speakers. And I would ask all speakers to adhere to the time that we give you. The first person that we have on the agenda is Reverend Pamela Pinckney Butts. And she's from Cleveland. She's here to talk about homelessness. She's representing the People's Party. And she is not being paid by anyone. Reverend Pinckney Butts. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, to whom this is only applicable, all white people are not racist, so I just need to start with that. We know that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. I came this evening, uh, Council President Griffin and Mayor Justin Bibb, to get your assistance to address homelessness. I wrote a little something, but I'm not gonna stick with the paper completely. We know that homelessness is a matter of even fair housing in, in many instances. But homelessness is not what the, the racist, sexist, atheist, demonically possessed media shows because homelessness is the robbery and rape and the murder and the terrorism, terrorism of we people of color in this country, in this city, and in this state. I know this personally, I know it professionally, and I stand this evening because on October 10th, 2002, I became homeless. My son right now is sitting in Cuyahoga County Jail where he was stolen from me when he was five years old in violation of a protection order with 20 plus felonies facing him because someone decided to make me homeless for reporting abuse. I've been homeless and displaced for over 22 years, Mayor Bibb and Council President. I'm concerned because as he sits in that jail, we have a director for the law department in the city of Cleveland who's getting a salary, knowing the situation and no one's stepping up. Homelessness. It affects people of color in a way that still is not properly addressed. Even the situation that took place a few weeks ago, the media, as soon as they see me, they, they leave the room because it's homeless, this is real. And my other three children are displaced, dysfunctional, disposed, disrespected, and disregarded. I don't have to have blonde hair. I don't have to have straight hair. I don't have to be a man. I don't have to be gay, LBGTQ, XYZ, whatever it is. I don't have to be any of that. This is also a violation of our heritage, our history, our her story, our homes, as it was in the days of Christopher Columbus, and as it was in the days when the racist white evangelicals went to Africa and said they were going to teach Christianity to the heathens. Homelessness. It's real. It's a violation of our heterosexual rights because they do everything Reverend, they can do time, time. to discredit and degrade our people. Thank you. I wrote a cop. I have a copy of 
my concerns that I would like to give you, Mayor Bibb, and the clerk, Thank and I don't know who you want me to give it to so you all can have it. Thank you. Who do you want me to give it to? She'll get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have Dallas Ekman from Ward 17. He's here to talk about city investment strategies. He's from the Party for Socialism and Liberation Cleveland branch, not being paid by anyone. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, in order to ensure that you're paying attention to your constituents this evening, I'll remind every Council member here that texts sent uh, by a public official during a private device on a public meeting are actually public record. So the group chat that Blaine Griffin and Council members have been using over the many meetings, um, I'm going to be submitting a public records request. And I I assume that every council person here will comply with the FOIA request because they have certainly not said anything incriminating or damning about the people in this room. Now that I have your attention, I assume, I've come here tonight because one thing is clear about this body. You've lost your opportunity. You lost the gracious, countless chances afforded to you by the working people coming to this council every week. We gave you week after week to be able to see the crowd as human beings, and you found every excuse in the book in order to maintain your financial connections. You'll go to your grave holding your failure to name this genocide when you had the opportunity. That will be your cross to bear. That will be your burden to carry for the rest of your life and no one will absolve you of it. Instead, you force this community's hand to act as the political arm of the popular will and pass our own resolution two weeks ago. You will carry the mark of shame for the remainder of your life in politics and be labeled forever as a council that made it unable to act in the most basic way to represent Cleveland interests. Let me reiterate my purpose here today. You've lost your chance. A ceasefire resolution from you is cheap and pathetic. After 30,000 killed Palestinians, a resolution from this body shows your ceiling for human suffering is monstrously high. So instead of working with the people, you've made an enemy of us. Not today, but in perpetuity. After seeing us mobilize hundreds of people each week, you think you'd be wise not to make an enemy of us, but you don't seem to want to learn from your political failures. So don't mis misinterpret me. That does not mean we are retreating from this council or the political state. Quite the opposite. The time for a simple and moral baseline of a call for ceasefire has passed, and after 15 weeks of genocide, we will accept nothing less than a complete decoupling from the government of Israel. City investments in Israel must end. Political deals which allow for this council to spend money on Israeli contracts instead of hiring companies here in the U.S. must end. The county must retract all bonds in its portfolio. The city must demand that Key Bank retract all of its investments in Israel if it wants to do business in Cleveland. No public development money will be given to Dan Gilbert, friend of the IDF. The city will exert pressure on the county and the state to fully divest from Israel. This council will call on Case Western Reserve to reinstate students for justice in Palestine and support the students' call to divest the university from Israel. You lost your chance to support a call to ceasefire. Israel must no longer be treated as a normal state, and our citizens' dollars can no longer go abroad to commit ethnic cleansing and murder. From this point forward, the city never will be allowed to operate as normal, and this council will be made the embarrassment of the state until Israel is fully isolated economically and those commit a genocide are punished accordingly. Council, you thought we were done. Council, we'd only just started. You too. Next, we have Juan Colado Diaz. Juan Colado Diaz is from Ward 11. He's here to talk about left versus right. He's representing the Libertarian Party and not being paid by anyone. Good evening, Council. Good evening, everybody. My name is Juan Collado Diaz, as you all may know, and I am a member of the Libertarian Party of Ohio and the Libertarian Party nationally. This is important to mention because what's happening today in our society is not a left versus right issue, it's a right versus wrong issue. And you all are taking that stance with the wrong side when you keep letting this happening. You have the opportunity to release a ceasefire statement and all of you refuse. Instead, some of you go in bed with the enemy, like Max Miller and Councilman of War 3, which had a whole hangout and posted on Twitter, or other members then go and hang out with the ones that have said things like, let's turn Gaza into a parking lot. With that said, another thing that is locally, because that's what you all care about, and Mayor Bibb, you also should care about this, is our local park, Cadell Park. As of today, Cadell Park is on the way of getting destroyed to be turned into a new school. We, the members of Cadell Park and the Cadell community, agree with the school being built, but we also want the park to stay where it is. This is an issue where our trees need to be stopped taking down and cutting down, and our environment needs to be protected over our buildings. When Cadell died and put in his will clearly, then this park should be used as a park and it was given to the city. Mayor Bibb, you have the power to talk to CMSD to stop this. You can do it. You have the councilwoman of that ward support the park and the people of the park. What else do you need? You can do that. 
you should also remind you that what's happening in Gaza is an environmental issue. These bombs are destroying our planet, and you guys are funding those bombs by not supporting Palestine. So yes, these issues all connect. They all are one. This is not only an issue of here. It's a right versus wrong. And you all are on the wrong side. This next year, you're all in an election. You'll all be running as Democrats or Republicans or whatever else you want to run. If any of you want to run as Libertarians or Socialists, I will make sure that I vote for the right. And I'm pretty sure everybody back here will also make sure that they vote for right and not wrong. Have a good night. Thank you. Next, we have Basma Hamid. Basma Hamid is from Rocky River, here to talk about justice for all, not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Good evening. 21 years ago, from today, Rachel Curry, a Jewish American justice for children activist, body was crushed into pieces by a Zionist Israeli military bulldozer while trying to protect the home of a Palestinian family from turning into rubble. 20 years ago, Thomas Hardell, a British photographer, was shot in cold blood by a Zionist Israeli sniper while trying to save children from their fire. Thousands of stories are still untold as the Zionist Israeli, backed by the U.S., keeps slaughtering Palestinians in cold blood. The terrorism caused by the Zionist Israel and its support supported by, uh, started way, October, by, uh, way before October 7th. It is day 165 of the genocide, and this body of Cleveland City Council still sits here objecting to speak up for the Palestinian community that resides and pays taxes in Cleveland. Now, as we speak, there are over 30,000 sick, displaced people at Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza under siege are forced to move yet again, including nurses, doctors, where justice, where's justice, where's the humanity? We are witnessing the systemic dest destruction of people's ability to survive. Mothers leave to look for flour to bake bread for their children and come back to what was known as a home, now turned into rubble. No children, no bread, and no home. The price of flour is worth more than a Palestinian's life. There is no great, greater evil than massacring genocide, starving people, collecting food for their dying children of starvation. Do you care? Where is justice? Where is the humanity? For God's sake, how much more pain and suffering can children in Gaza and Palestine take? They are screaming for help. They are in mental, physical, and emotional pain. But the only response they are receiving is their echo, and their voices are not heard. Unfortunately, the world is deaf, blind, and muted by the huge lies the Zionists spread by the, by the media about terrorism caused by them the way, the way before October 7th. The, enti the entire Al Jazeera team that was reporting on the attack on Al Shifa Hospital has been arrested by the Zionist occupiers. The message is w very clear now. Anyone who tries to document the Zionist occupiers' war crimes against humanity is silenced by getting killed in cold blood or taken to jail to unknown t uh, location. But you will not silence me. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Brenda Bickerstaff. Brenda Bickerstaff is from Ward 9. Ms. Bickerstaff is here to talk about the Com Cleveland Community Police Commission. She is not representing anyone, not being paid by anyone. Ms. Bickerstaff has the floor. Good evening, Council. Mr. Bishop, I want to bring this to your attention. I'm a private investigator. Kevin Conwell and President Griffin know about this. In 2012, I was working on a case and a dirty cop, a detective, wrongfully had me indicted. Am I correct, Kevin? I pulled text messages on his cell phone. 30,000 text messages, he had slept with about 30 women. 
So what the police department did, the good old police department, they tried to help them. They only looked at 8,000 and it was 30. So guess what? He was fired, the city blocked him for three years, but then he got his job back. God damn, no justice. So you say a commission shouldn't be over the police if they don't know? I whooped his ass and I've never been a cop. So you gotta be careful when you think please somebody right don't language, know Ms. certain Ms. things. Please use language. Excuse me. Thank you. But you gotta be careful when you think somebody don't know something. And, I, and I've been to the penitentiary. But because I've been to the penitentiary, I made a bad decision. It doesn't mean I was stupid because I got degrees too. Kevin can back this up and so can the council president because they went to the mayor. Am I correct? Councilwoman House, love you to death. Sometimes you gotta be careful in this city how you make friends and relationships because that could end you up in a federal penitentiary. It can. You know I love you, Mr. Starr, but when you speak, please be careful that you got the correct information. Councilwoman Spencer, I'm gonna look forward to coming to your movie night so I can kick it with your officers because those officers are officers that I would like to see on the forts. Thank you very much. Oh, and Mr. Casey, you laughed. Oh, I knew it wasn't gonna work anyway. I wonder, are you a racist? You think white cops should kill black people? I'm just wondering about that. Thank you very much. Next we have Richard Jackson. Richard Jackson is from the Cleveland West Side. He's here to talk about the Cleveland Community Police Commission. He's not representing anyone and he is not being paid by anyone. Mr. Jackson, you have to Good evening, council members, Mr. President. Uh, first, I'm, I'm really here to ask for your cooperation. <clears throat> I understand you guys take a lot of flack regarding the Cleveland Police Commission. Some people really don't understand it. Others really want it, but they don't really know what they should be doing to help. When we started this process, and myself, I was one of the writers of it, I spent 30 years in the Cleveland Police Department. I came here directly after serving as uh, United States Marine Special Forces. I went there, came here, served here for 30 years. I grew up right behind John Adams. Came here to serve my city, where I grew up at. I understand a lot of the stress points in the police department, and I have to say that the consent decree that we have is actually doing, is starting to do some things. You're starting to see some ripple effects, but they're small, and what we're asking for of you is that I hear you guys always talk about the monies that we spend on the consent decree, $10 million. Well, what we're proposing to you is, is that if you give us the assistance that the commission requires, allow it to have its independence that the law demands, you will more than likely see a very, very quick turnaround and a larger part of the consent decree completed. It is very clear by the citizens that they will not allow anything less than 100% of the consent decree. Not one, if you're looking to go less than that, you're not going to make it work. So in order to get to that 100%, there have been many ways that we can get there. And one is really just to allow the commission to do its work. It can get to the 100%. There may be a time where they may put an RFP before you. Please don't block it. Please don't Bigfoot it. Please allow them to have the independence that they need so that they can have the tools that they need to get to this consent decree and get to 100%. With that, I say thank you for listening to me. Have a good night. Thank you. Next, we have Alex Popiv Popivker from Cleveland Heights to talk about freedom of speech, representing no one, and not being paid by anyone. Good evening, Mayor, President, esteemed Councilman. First of all, I'd like to wish uh, Ramadan Karim to fellow Muslim Clevelanders and um, Happy Purim to fellow Jews on upcoming holiday of Purim. Ramadan is a month of repentance. Something uh, I think we all uh, should appreciate. It's a month of introspection. 
you know, nobody's perfect and uh, everyone should really question themselves and not be arrogant to think that uh, what they believe is 100% right. I'd like to uh, mention also that um, Purim is a holiday when a certain evil person, Haman, decided to slander the Jewish people and spread all kinds of lies about Jews, very much like people like Abbas Hamideh of our own Cleveland, who says that Jews don't belong in the Middle East and should go back to Poland, openly supports Hezbollah and Hamas, and on October 9th, openly praised the massacre, together with Chance Zurub, who is over here, This kind of propaganda, this kind of uh, abuse of freedom of speech is something that we should all be concerned with. When people are allowed to spread, uh, it's called genocide incitement, a dehumanization, demonization of a group of people, it leads to massacres like we witnessed on October 7th. And unfortunately, most of these children are brainwashed. They don't know any better. And that's why I ask you, please, Mayor, President, please. We have all these organizations on, uh, you know, diversity, uh, on tolerance, but none of them, I follow them, they, they do not speak about anti-Semitism. We do not learn about Jewish people. Please, I ask you, let's look into, let's put it on the agenda, IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, and let's look into educating people so that we can balance the evil speech with good speech, with information, with knowledge, because then hopefully we will never see another massacre again, and there will be, you know, t uh, terrorists will no longer have the support that comes from this evil speech that makes it all possible. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you. Next we have Sarah Popivker from Cleveland Heights to talk about modern feminism. She is not representing anyone and she is not being paid by anyone. Sarah, you have the floor. Mr. Mayor and esteemed members of the council, shalom. We are more than halfway through Women's History Month celebrating women's achievements in all fields. Yet, last night a friend made me aware of a sticker that had been found on a pole here in downtown Cleveland. On the sticker it was written, rape is resistance. Free Palestine by all means necessary. That's what it said. I had a plan to come here and talk about how much more work we need to do for women to really have an equal part in society, reproductive rights, etc. But what's more self-explanatory than the message that that sticker is spreading? I hope that the city will take measures to prevent the spread of this kind of ideology, because rape is never justified, not in our beloved Cleveland, nor anywhere else. I conclude by mentioning the names of all the women still held hostage and sexually, physically, and psychologically abused in Gaza. May they soon be released and return to their loved ones. Naama Levi, Noah Argamani, Romy Gonen, Arbel Yehud, Carmel Gat, Eden Yerushalmi, Doron Steinbrecher, Liri Albag, Daniela Gilboa, Shiri Bibas, Karina Ariev, Agam Berger, and Emily Damari. Thank you. Next we have Razmia Al Nadi from Medina to talk about a ceasefire, and she is not representing anyone and she is not being paid by anyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be with all of you during this holy month of Ramadan. I hope it is a month filled with ease to all those that celebrate. Personally, I know I can't complain knowing my brothers and sisters in Gaza are voluntarily and involuntarily fasting at once. Today I will humanize those people, my people, our people. We have this trend of individualism throughout our great country this concept that our actions are exclusively our actions, but we're all connected. As my philosophy professor stated, 
our actions, our recommendations for others. I have an impact and so do all of you. Whether that impact is positive or negative is up to each one of us to decide. For our great country to stand back and abuse its veto, for our name to repeatedly allow international crime, is to set an international status quo. To convince you to proudly stand on the right side of history, I will re be reading a list to humanize our people. I will begin with children killed below the age of one. Badr Abu Habib, Baha Musa, Basil Abu Jasser, Bilal Subh, Bilal Hamdan, Celine Daher, Celine Al Bahtiti, daughter of Dina Natat, daughter of Zainab Nawas, Liat Musa, Liat Kishko, Elena Al Rifi, Elian Al Khamer, Ella Al Drimli, Isam Farah, Itaf Riyad, Hizzet Sakalla, Fadl Abu Hasira, Fahd Al Ajaz, Farah Hanoun, Farah Abu Shabab, Fatima Sultan, Fatima Nofal, Fatima Al Hout, Fairuz Abu Salima, Firas Tamraz, George Suri, Gaith Al Bahlul, Gaith Nofal, Ghazal Abu Lashin, Ghazal Al Hadad, Hala Al Sanwar, Hamza Ashur, Hassan Al Amsi, and Hassan Abu Dagga. What was that? Less than 50 names? Have I humanized them enough? 50 infants of the 11,000 children, 50 infants of the 30,000 Palestinians, human beings. So I ask again, have I humanized them enough? Thank you. Next we have Omar Mansour. Omar Mansour is from Brooklyn. And Omar, Omar Mansour wants to talk about aid for first responders. He is not representing anyone and not being paid by anyone. Omar has the floor. Is Omar Mansour here? Omar Mansour? Okay, I don't see Omar Mansour. Therefore, public comment is over. Um, are there any introductions? Any introductions? I do want to introduce uh, former retired judge Michael Nelson, as well as I'm going to let Councilman Bishop uh, acknowledge uh, the next person. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I want to acknowledge um, Coach Harris. He's a, a proud War II resident. Uh, welcome to the chamber, Mr. Coach Harris. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge, if he could please stand, Pastor Mark Smith, as well as uh, he's the councilman in Garfield Heights. If he could please stand, Mark Smith. Thank you. Let's give our guests a round of applause. Thank you. Are there any announcements? Any announcements? Are there any announcements? Oh, okay. Councilman Starr and then Councilman uh, Conwell. I want to introduce, obviously, Mohammed Red Dye here, but then also I want to introduce Tim Lewis um, over Riddall as well as um, different other programs in our community for the work that they do in the community. Thank you. All right, Councilman Conwell. I want to introduce a Derek Dixon. He just texted me that he's here. Derek Dixon. Well, that's cool beans. He just texted me. He was here. I guess he went outside. Thank you. Councilman Casey. We are on announcements, but we're moving to miscellaneous. Okay, now we have miscellaneous. Do we have any miscellaneous? Councilman Conwell, Councilman Casey. Um, you know, I was real, real pleased during the um, St. St. Patty's Day Parade. Got a chance to uh, um, play. I was going to march with John Marshall, but um, they had one snare drum and young girl I was going to march with. Um, she needed to play so her family could see her. But I really, really dig the, um, the band, Mr. Mayor. You, they said that you uh, nominated them to play in Washington, D.C. on July the 4th. That band is growing. There's 96 members there of young children. So they asked me to um, donate some dollars to them and I'm gonna help them out to go to um, Washington, D.C. And um, I asked Tony Tell to reach out to the other council members so we could help the children to go to Washington, D.C. on July the 4th. 
a lot of force. And they will represent Cleveland well. So it's not about, Marshall is not in my ward, but it's about the children. They're our children. We're city council members, so we should help because it's our job just to help throughout the city of Cleveland. So Tony Tell will reach out to other council members so that we can make sure that these babies will make it to um, Washington, D.C. That's going to happen. Um, the other thing about music in the arts with children, my, my band will open June the 12th and wait over Wednesday. But what we're looking for, for every engagement that the bands play, that we can have youth and children to play with us. I reached out to Julio de Burgos. I'm waiting for a phone call from Letitia because I would love to have, she's doing a great job. I would love to have some children from over there to open up for my band on June the 12th so that we can give them um, at least a half an hour or 45 minutes. This way, they'll be engaged and they'll have professional musicians to work with them. And then, because you have to cultivate young people. So I need her to call me. We'll get your kids on and we're looking to have children on every single event. You have to reach and children got to know that you care for them. So if you know any groups, any rock groups, any other kind of um, groups in the arts with children, let me know so that we can have them open up and they'll feel real good. As a matter of fact, when we open, it's at least 10,000 people are in attendance while we're playing and it's some of them, it's their first gig. Thank you and thank you for listening to me. Let me know. Thank you. Councilman Brian Casey. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, amongst other things, uh, March is Developmental Disability Month. And on March 21st, which is 321, is World Down Syndrome Day. And on World Down Syndrome Day, uh, the Northeast Ohio, uh, Down Syndrome Association in Northeast Ohio is holding an awareness event called Rock Your Socks. Uh, each council member got a, uh, an email from me today in a pair of socks along with the mayor. All we're asking is that uh, you take a picture of you in your mismatched socks and uh, post it on social media. I know city council is going to do our own video. If council members could just take that uh, picture and send it to me so that we can send that out. We gave a pair to, to the mayor as well, so any of your staff members, we still do have socks left if anybody needs a pair of socks for Rock Your Socks uh, this Thursday, which is uh, World Down Syndrome Day. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, do we have any other, any other miscellaneous? Seeing no other miscellaneous, um, I do want to congratulate everyone that we did uh, get the budget appropriated for the year. Um, as always, nobody gets everything that they want, but I think that we uh, did make some headways and I appreciate everybody's support through this process. We are going to be doing an assessment um, and working with the finance director to see how we can always continue to uh, work on our processes. So thanks everybody, appreciate it. I, I do Go ahead, Councilman. Uh, I do need that money for those children. Every year, every year, we, we um, pay for children to have music camps at Julio de Burgos, at Music School Settlement, at Rainey Institute of Music. They're there practicing, and this is how you stop crime. We got it. Because come. you keep them busy. Yeah, we, we were, I know you, you right, and we had that conversation. We'll be talking with uh, the mayor and the chief. We got a conversation with them tomorrow about it. All right, all right. Thank all right. you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, do we have any other miscellaneous? Seeing other miscellaneous, once again, uh, thanks everybody. And uh, Madam Clerk, please excuse the absences. I know that Councilman Polensic is also an excused absence. By Council Member Starr that the absence of Council Members Gray, Joe Jones, and Polensic are hereby excused. Seconded by Council Member Spencer. Thank you. Council is adjourned to the next regular meeting on March 25, 2024. Thank you.